Welcome to this, the next edition of our daily devotions, coming to you from Church of the Palms in Sarasota, Florida. We're on our way to hearing each day more good news from the Gospel of Mark. So let us now prepare our hearts and minds and reflect upon this moment of opportunity to hear God's Spirit by listening to this beautiful music played by Jonathan Spivey. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So we continue on in Mark's gospel with an interesting occurrence that takes place just after our story yesterday. You remember yesterday, Jesus and his disciples went on retreat. And after a busy time of ministering and after a rest, they returned to this enormous crowd of need, 10,000 at least of hungry people. And Jesus challenges the disciples to give them something to eat, but they don't think they have it among them or within them to do it. So Jesus then says, well, let's take what you have. So they find these five loaves and two fish and Jesus blesses them, breaks them and gives it and miraculously, once he has had his hands on it, once it is within his scope, it becomes enough to heal, to feed everybody. It's an interesting lesson that mingled with the touch and handling of Jesus, what resources we have within and around are sufficient for the time. So then what follows is this story beginning at verse 45. Immediately, Jesus made his disciples get into the boat and go ahead to the other side, to Bethsaida, where, while he dismissed the crowd. And after saying farewell to them, he went up on the mountain to pray. And when evening came, the boat was out on the sea, and he was alone on the land. And when he saw that they were straining at the oars against an adverse wind, he came towards them early in the morning, walking on the sea. He intended to pass them by, but when they saw him walking on the sea, they thought it was a ghost and cried out, for they all saw him and were terrified. But immediately he spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. Then he got into the boat with them, and the wind ceased. And they were utterly astounded, for they did not understand about the loaves but their hearts were hardened. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This isn't the first time that Mark tells us a story about the disciples and trouble on the sea. The last time we heard this kind of story, Jesus was actually in the boat when they caught, caught in the storm, and it, it didn't take long for the disciples to allow the fear of the storm to erase in their minds the presence of Jesus in the boat. The wind and the waves trumped the Son of God, the miracle worker. So now the disciples are alone in the boat and they're having trouble again, straining at the oars against the wind. 
and they see in the distance on the waves this figure walking toward them on the water. Now, I don't blame them for thinking that this mysterious figure walking on an unwalkable surface must be some sort of apparition. I, I suppose I would too, and, and I'd be pulling out my phone and calling the closest psychiatrist. But it seems like they recognized him enough to know that it was him, but they just couldn't imagine that he would show up like this. They just couldn't imagine that he would show up like this which explains something that Mark says at the end of the story, that after Jesus gets in the boat with them, Mark says, and they were utterly astounded for they, they did not understand about the loaves, but their hearts were hardened. They did not understand about the loaves. What, what didn't they understand about the loaves? Well, maybe what they didn't understand was what we talked about before, that when Jesus is present, when, when Jesus is somewhere in our lives, there is this great potential of his taking what we have and making it enough for the day. If Jesus can make five loaves and two fish into a meal for a mob, isn't it possible that he can take what little reserve we have and make it enough to row against the wind and the waves? I had a wise old elder friend in my first church in Philadelphia. John was his name, and John was one of those who's who was one of those wise people who who didn't have much to say, but when he said it, just about everybody listened. And we could go three session meetings without John saying a word. Then sometime during that fourth meeting, he'd say something, and the whole room would fall silent because it felt like it was a word that came from the Lord. Well, I was a young pastor and I was facing a pretty difficult decision and I was really afraid of making the wrong decision. So one afternoon I went over to John's house and I explained to him this little dilemma that I was facing and fully expecting him to tell me what to do. So when I was done talking, I, I sat there waiting for his wisdom. And sure enough, the wisdom came. It just wasn't the wisdom I came looking for. He said something like this. He said, well, Steve, that's a really tough decision you have to make, and it seems like you've thought it through. And that was it. So I said, well, okay, well, what do you think I should do? And he said, I really don't know. But here's what I know. Whatever decision you make, right or wrong, Jesus is going to be with you and Jesus will help you get through it. In other words, on stormy seas or before hungry crowds, once we let the presence of Jesus get hold of us, what we have will be enough for the day. They did not understand about the loaves. I can't tell you how often I've forgotten all those times when faced with tough times, when faced with tough choices, when confronted even by the consequences of my own bad decisions, that somehow the presence of Jesus has gotten me through. He's taken what little I have and has made it enough for the day. So here's a question that maybe you might want to respond to on our Facebook page. When, when was there a time in your life that Jesus appeared and took what little you had and made it enough for the day. I'll say that again. When was there a time in your life that Jesus appeared and took what little you had and made it enough for the day? I'm guessing the more we remember those moments, the more confident we will be when we strain at the oars in the face of the wind. Let us pray. Lord, we know you are present. Sometimes it feels like you're right there inside the boat. and Sometimes it seems like nothing more than a faint apparition in the distance. Help us to trust in your presence. And help us to remember all those times 
when your presence was enough to get us through the day. In Jesus' name, amen.